Hi, welcome to another edition of Seven Spin Ballarama. It took me like six times to say that. So I'm not even going to, I'm just going to go forward. I'm not going to do another take. You're just going to have to deal with my, my blubber mouth that I have today for some reason. Uh, <laughs> so it's a, it's a pinball video. I'm in the studio, but this will actually be a pinball video. Back in my old workshop, I started doing a video, putting together a video on clear coating a play field using Verithane. And um, I never finished it because mostly it was circumstance. The, the guy who actually owned the play field, um, you've seen this play field. It's in my touch-up uh, video on doing touch-ups of play fields. It's that one. Um, sure shot, I think it's called. Um, yeah, so the guy who owned it, we were going to do at the very end, uh, we were, when I got finished with the play field, we were, he was going to come in, he was going to be on camera, we were going to do a little reveal thing, and it would have been a lot of fun. But he ended up moving before we got a chance to, to do that video. So all of this footage that I shot, I never put together. I was waiting to get it all uh, all, uh, all shot, and then I sit down and edit it all together. I never did that because we never finished it. So I thought, well, what the heck, I've, I've been wanting to put this together, I'll cobble it together, I'll piece it together, I'll come up with some kind of concise thing that you guys can watch and go, oh yeah, okay, there you go. Um, so th this video, I have, I have most of it, I have a lot of B-roll shots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cobble it together, and there's probably going to be a little bit more voiceover work. Usually I do kind of, I stand in front of the camera and just go blah, 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 but... Uh, in some cases, I'm not going to be able to do that for this. So I'll blah, 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 kind of as a voiceover. <laughs> uh, it's going to be in several parts. There's The first part is going to be sort of the prep work that I did, uh, what I did to the play field to, to get it ready to spray. I, I did some experimentation of stuff that I hadn't done before, so maybe that will be useful. Um, and then there might be two... two um, Two episodes of it, maybe three. It just depends on how much I want to trim my stuff down. So anyway, so this is the first one. I'm not going to do a voiceover for the, or an intro on the second one. I'll just jump right into it. Um, and then if there's a third one, I'll do the same thing. So uh, I think I've talked enough about that. So let's just jump right into that. I've already painted the play field. Um, when Caleb brought this to me, he uh, it, it was kind of messed up and he was like, hey, can you touch this up a little bit here and there? And I was like, sure, I'll touch this up a little bit here and there. And then like, just went crazy. <laughs> I, I sort of went, I think I did more than he expected, which is awesome. Um, Cause when he, when he gets it back, he's just gonna be ecstatic considering how he had it to begin with. Anyway, um, if, if this were a full, like full blown out restoration, um, I would have gone deeper into touching up and painting. But we have a problem with this play field is that there's a lot of planking and planking is where the wood uh, expands and contracts and causes a bunch of uh, cracks along the paint. Sometimes it will expand out and that paint will separate and pop out. And so you'll have these little lines in the, in the paint. So all throughout the yellow and in the white here, we have a lot of planking going on. There was some in in the red areas and some in the blue, and I was able to uh, do this little trick that I figured out where the, the wood separates and the paint comes out, bloop, out it comes, and you're left with a little unpainted line there. So you match the color of the paint, and I just use like my fingertip and put a little paint on it, and I run it along that the little gap and then wipe off everything else. And so the paint just kind of stays in that little crack and it works well. But uh, on on this yellow section, uh, none of the paint is coming out. We just have sort of these dark lines. And I'm going to try and get, as I'm prepping this, I'm going to try and use a little bit of um, sanding to kind of reduce that a little bit. But I'm not too worried about it. Caleb's not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. And this isn't like a full high-end restoration. It's just we're kind of bringing it back from the dead is all we're doing. And uh, when we're done, it'll be playable better than players quality, but uh, it won't ever be worth like a hundred million dollars or maybe who knows anyway. <laughs> so I did have a question on, um, 
on one of my videos about what do you do with this sort of sun bleach thing that's going on. So these flippers have been sitting in this position forever and the UV light and all kinds of other stuff has changed the color of what was exposed and now it's darker. I, and I've, I've not had to really deal with that before, so we're going to experiment. Uh, I hope Caleb doesn't mind. <laughs> we're not going to make it worse. Maybe it'll be better. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do on this is I'm going to try and sand it. And we'll try and remove um, some of this darker color. And if, if it won't sand down all the way, then maybe what I can do is just sort of feather it back a little bit. So that you don't have this, this kind of cookie cutter cutout of this flipper shape. Um, and maybe it'll just be a little bit better blended. The other thing that uh, I need to work on is along the top, there's a section where the ball has gone across and it's kind of dug a, a deep groove into it, into um, what I think has happened is I think at one point someone has hit it with clear already and that ball has uh, grooved out that clear. So we're gonna sand that back a little bit and try and fix that up a little bit. I'm not going to sand the entire surface. And when I do this, normally I would mask it and sand, but I'm not gonna do that because there are some sections of this area of this paint that's just barely hanging on. Um, at one point I had masked off something and when I peeled the, the masking tape off, it took a bit of paint with it. So I'm a little nervous to do any more masking on this. When we clear it, that should hold everything in place. It should be fine. But, so I'm not gonna mask this. And that's also one of the reasons why uh, I didn't just go crazy overkill with this and mask this off and spray all of this yellow and, and make it look all pretty and, and perfect. Because if I did that, I'd be going down this rabbit hole of, okay, now I've peeled this up and all of this black has come off and I peeled up more of this blue and I'd just be kind of chasing paint. Um, and I, I, I don't know if it's worth doing it to this. I think actually it'll look pretty cool when it's all done because it'll have a little like, you know, patina or whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna sand in a few places, not in all places. Um, I did a test with the clear in this area and it's adhering fine to it not sanding. I've, I did one coat and two coats and, and it's not coming up. So it'll be fine across the whole surface of the thing. Now let's talk about the clear. The clear that I'm using, um, on this one, it's I'm using the Varathane. And in in my Black Knight retheme, uh, I tried using the Varathane and I had such a large amount of um, the oil-based enamel one-shot that this water-based Varathane, Varathane couldn't adhere to it at all. And even in places where I sanded it, it just they, the two were not compatible. So I ended up going with this Spray Max uh, two-part uh, clear in a rattle can. It's an automotive clear. A lot of people use this. Um, but the, with the, you're going to have a really hard surface uh, with this. And that's not really... Um, on these, these older play fields, the, the enamels and paints and the things that they used were a little bit softer. So putting a super high gloss, deep, rich shine on an old EM that never looked like that, a little out of place, in my opinion, anyway. I don't, this is pinball, and in pinball, uh, everything you do is wrong. So, <laughs> I'm probably wrong. <laughs> um, but I've, I've had really good luck with the Varathane, and we don't need that. So this is a Ver Varathane uh, Fin Diamond, oh, French. Uh, Varathane Diamond Wood Finish Outdoor. Uh, it's water-based, it, it works well, but it has some particular quirks about it. And that's part of what this video is going to be all about. It's kind of the quirkiness and the things that you have to watch out for when you use this. Um, just to cover them real quick, if you spray too much of it, it will cloud, especially your darker paints below it. So they'll get a little hazy and cloudy. So you have to watch that. The other thing that it does is it shrinks as it cures. So we're going to do, uh, oh, and the other thing it does, and we're not going to worry about it on this one because there, there wasn't that much paint, but I found in another one where I use acrylics as my touch up, 
when I got too much of this on, on the first coat, it pulled all of the dirt through the acrylics and all of my acrylic touch up got kind of grubby looking and I actually had to go back and kind of paint some of it again. Um, so that's something you have to watch out for. On this one, I don't think we're, we have to worry too much about it. So the process we're gonna do on this is we're going to do a couple of really light coats. We're just really gonna kind of mist it and let it all sort of settle in. Um, and that will avoid, that will help avoid any of that sort of the bleed through that I got on the acrylics, even though I don't think we have to worry about it, I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll do one, we'll let it sort of mostly dry, and then we'll do another one. After that dries, there are a couple of target areas here where um, he's got a little, um, there's a little, little scooping in his inserts with little divots. Uh, a couple of places where we have, um, we're gonna want a little bit more clear on it. So I'm gonna target those areas next, and I'm not gonna do the whole thing, I'll just kinda hit those. Let that clear, and then I'll do one good, um, no, let that clear, we'll let it dry. We'll let the clear dry. <laughs> I do these just in like one take usually, and then I do them again in another take, and I just pick the best one. So uh, that's the way it goes. I could do the YouTube edit thing where I just like, like talk three words and then cut and splice and my head jumps around like this. So, no, anyway. <laughs> okay, so after, after I target those areas, then we'll do a single coat that is just, we're just gonna lay it on thick. Um, and it'll look frightening because the whole thing will be kind of white and uh, funny looking. That will, that will dry. Uh, then we'll hit it another time like that. Then we'll see what we need to, to focus on. And that being some of these uh, scooped inserts or maybe some areas where uh, you know, we, we can see there's a problem. And, and we'll just sort of play the rest of the spraying by ear. We are gonna do some sanding in between some of this. Um, in all, we will probably have two light coats, uh, two heavy coats, and probably another heavy coat. Hard to say. But like I said, we don't want a super thick, rich, clear. We want, we want the play field to be smooth. We want... Uh, we don't want the ball to be bouncing off of divots and everything like that as we're gonna try and clean it up as much as possible. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start by um, doing a little sanding and see if we can fix this stuff and that up there and see how that goes. Uh, okay, so let's sand this. The, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I don't have my little jar, so I'm using, today's naphtha will be played by uh, Coleman Camp Fuel. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put some naphtha on a rag so that I can use it to wipe stuff off with. And I'm going to start playing around with this. Uh, this is 400 grit paper. It's just some scraps that I had. And let's see if we can get any movement on this and see if we can get it to change color at all. Normally I would use like a block for sanding. Um, but I think this will give you a little bit more control. Uh, yeah, that doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> I don't think that this is going to work. <laughs> I think I would have to really sand all the way down to all of this. Um, but it, it looks, looks about the same. So when we get the clear on it, it's going to look a lot like it does when I wet it with naphtha. So I think it's going to, maybe if anything, we made it a little bit worse. <laughs> it's a little bit lighter on this side now. Awesome. Sorry, Caleb. Um, yeah. Okay. 
well, it was worth a shot. But up there, I think that I can, um, I think I can improve that because there really is sections that it's it's taken taken the clear out. So I'm going to sand that down uh, and get that ready to go, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll sort of prep the the play field. I've cleaned up my my little part along the top, uh, and I think that that'll be fine. Off camera, I decided to be a little aggressive at this spot down here. Um, and I went at it with uh, 150 grit sandpaper. And you know what? Actually, when it's um, when it's wet, I think that'll look pretty good. Um, I am down to wood, though, so it has actually changed the color of the wood. It's I thought that the primary the primarial primar primar <laughs> YouTube edits. I thought what caused it to change color, I have to edit out the uhs, uh, 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 yeah. So uh, it's actually, um, some of the wood has discolored as well as the clear that's on top of it. So that'll, that'll be a little bit better. So now we have all these dark lines in here and I'm going to use a uh, trusty old, um, magic eraser, melanin foam and rubbing alcohol. And let's see if we can lighten those up a little bit. Um, if we can, that would be awesome sauce. So like uh, in the technique that I used in my other video, I like to get a little, little rubbing alcohol on there first. Let it kind of sit for a second. And then I just kind of slowly... Just slowly work it. And on this one, I want to be extra careful because the paint is, um, the paint is kind of um, sensitive. It's a sensitive flower. So it does seem like it's lightening it up a little bit. I'm going through the paint though, right here, just a little bit. So I think what I'm going to actually do, I can't do very much, but that is a little bit better. So I'm just going to lightly go over. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to lightly go over. I just barely touched this and it's starting to come off. So, um, we're not going to do that at all. <laughs> maybe in, maybe in some of these more, no, nope, I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to do it. I think I'll make things. Remember that rabbit hole I talked about, uh, earlier. Yeah. I think this is a rabbit hole, so we're not going to worry about it. So let's, uh, I'm going to let this kind of all this stuff evaporate and then we'll hit it with our first coat of clear. Actually, no, I'm going to clean it up and then we'll hit it with clear.